First of all, let me say thanks to Pastor Drisdale for his words of welcome and introduction. He says, I'm his boss, but you know how our church is set up, right? And you know what Christian leadership is all about, right? That when you are the leader, Jesus says you are the servant. So I leave it to you to judge who is whose boss. <laughs> 
say thanks to the Seventh-day Adventist fraternity here for the invitation to share these very special moments with you. Chapel Day is always a very special time. And it is good to see some familiar faces and familiar faces from all over. I've been walking up and up. Well, no. It's the wrong Bible character said that, right? Good. So I've been moving around <laughs> this island quite a bit here and there and have made several good friends all over the place. And uh, I don't want to start picking out anybody in particular, but I must mention my good friends from the Seventh-day Adventist fraternity at Case. And I mention them in particular because up until quite recently I served as chaplain of that fraternity. And these people were my family. So when I meet up on the family members, I have to kind of give a little recognition here and there. But all you other people who I know from Central and North and Northeast and all that kind of thing, big up every time. Now let me get down to some protocol because protocol requires that I say this. I bring you greetings from Jamaica Union, <laughs> from our president, Pastor Everett Brown. And I tell you, this is not an empty one because Pastor Brown is a former youth director and has the love of the youth in his system. And he wants me to greet the young people every time I get with them. Greetings from Pastor Brown, from Pastor Gregory, our secretary, and from Elder Barwise, our treasurer, and from all of those of us who work out there at uh, Jamaica Union. One of the things about working with the union is that there tends to be a little distance between the union and the people, not true? Yes, you have a whole layer and another layer of organization between and, and, and so on and so forth. But we are trying to ensure that we obliterate all of that because we are one big happy family. Today as we come to worship in this setting, God has a blessing for us. Do you believe that? Yes. This past week I was doing week of prayer at a particular high school and what they would do um, before we be began the work each day is that everybody would ask the Lord and it was quite interesting to hear them saying together, Lord, may I have my blessing please? <laughs> But you know, I believe that God heard that prayer and we had a blessed and wonderful time together. And I'm sure that he has a blessing for each and every one of us here and that we will receive that blessing if we will ask for it. And so I ask you to bow your heads with me, but not just listen or just close your eyes while I pray, but I invite each of you in your own heart to speak to God. Because each moment with God is a special moment. And the Sabbath is a special time when he gets with his people to do a work on our hearts. It's why he says, leave everything else behind and come apart and worship me so that he can do something in us and for us so that we will be equipped that he can do something through us. And so at this time, I ask you to bow your heads with me as we present ourselves before him. Our loving Heavenly Father, today we come again. It's another day, just like any other Sabbath perhaps, but then it is never just another day when we are in the presence of God. And we have come today to worship you. We give you our praise. We give you honor and adoration. We give you the gratitude of our hearts. And we ask that you'll fill our lives with your blessings. Your coming is soon. We know that. Our characters must be ready. We know that. We've got a long way to go. We know that. So today, do a work upon us, we pray. Bind the evil spirits and cast them from this place. And may your Holy Spirit reign supreme. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Wedding day is on the way. From time to time, I have had friends who are looking forward to wedding day. And as I said that, I saw a particular friend of mine smile. 
because she knows what I'm talking about. Wedding day is a time of eager, well, the time between, uh, the time before wedding day is a time of eager anticipation. Because wedding day is looked upon as a happy day, a day of fulfillment, a day when something special happens. And for many people, that is perhaps the most special day of their lives. Wedding day is on the way. And this is our time of anticipation. And don't be fooled, we're not talking about anybody else's wedding. We're talking about yours and mine. Because God has set aside a day when he will marry his church. And we are the church of the living God. I invite you therefore to turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 22. And there we begin with that passage that was chosen for your scripture reading. St. Matthew chapter 22. Some folks like to say, when you have found it, say amen. amen. I've always found that one to be interesting because everybody don't find it at the same time, you know. So, some say amen, 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 amen. But in Matthew 22, reading, beginning at verse 2, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. A very interesting beginning. When we were little children, those of us from the, 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 the older days, because you see, uh, nowadays people don't listen to stories anymore, people watch TV, right? <laughs> yes. But uh, some, some of us used to have stories told to us before bed. And many of these stories, uh, with the exception of situations where people are Christians and the stories are always Bible stories, you know what I mean? But many of these stories begin with once upon a time and go on to say that there was a prince hmm? and then there was a princess and then the plot thickens and all kind of thing happen, things happen but at the end they got married and lived happily ever after. And so here it is that Jesus seems to be coming along the same vein because he starts off with a prince. A certain king made a marriage for his son and he sent his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding but they wouldn't come and so he sent again other servants and he told them listen man this thing is going to be nice he told them about the preparations he told them about the food and all of that and the people just made light of it we're told in verse 5 and went about their own business. One gone to farm, one gone to this business place, and so on and so forth. And then they also turned on these servants and abused them. And so the king heard about it, verse 7. He was very angry, and he sent and dusted out those guys. And then he said to his servants, Go out into the highway, and invite left, right, and center. He, she, and the old lady, everybody. Tell them that I have wedding plan and they must come. And so that happened and all these people came in. I'm going to pause right there because the next part of the story is significant. But I want to say a few things here. Jesus is speaking in parables as he so very often does and he, he speaks about the wedding. It is not a mistake that many, many times in the Bible the, the relationship between God and his people are like, is likened unto a romance. Love and marriage. God invented marriage. Because, you see, God wants above all things that we should know him as who he is. 
John chapter 17 verse 3 says, This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. The knowledge of God is the most important knowledge for any person. As you are here pursuing your studies at this institution or other institutions, it is important to remember that the fear of the Lord and the knowledge of God is the beginning of wisdom. No amount of the acquisition of academic knowledge, chemistry, biology, mathematics, engineering, teaching methods, whatever it is, all of these, as important as they are, are secondary to a knowledge of God. Because your academic preparation is actually fixing life for you here and now. And even after you have acquired the requisite qualifications and you go out into the job market, sometimes you can't get a job. And when you do get a job, sometimes you find that some of the things you have learned before are irrelevant and are not able to equip you for the job that you have taken. But I thank my God that all knowledge, if it is true knowledge and good knowledge, comes from God. And so when I know God, I have gone straight to the source. And the knowledge of God equips me not only to be effective and successful in this life, but it also equips me for the life to come. And so, God wants us to know Him. Who is God? God is our triune Lord. Three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And the three of them are bound together by the strongest cohesive force in the universe, the power of love. And in an effort for us to understand him better, God has put in place marriage, where a man and a woman can become one even though they are two, and this in a limited way will help us to begin to understand what God is like. In speaking therefore of the relationship with his church, he likens that relationship to a marriage where he and his church become one. As a matter of fact, he uses another symbol where he says that I am the head and the church is my body. Therefore, if you check the church out and you should take a DNA test of the church and take a DNA test of God, you should find that there is a common bond there because they are head and body one being. In this idea of the wedding, therefore, God is saying, I want you to be one with me. Here he is using this symbol in this parable. A marriage for his son. And he sends out the invitation. You guys come to the wedding, come to the wedding. So they come. Notice that it says he sent his servants to call them that were bid. They were invited from before. This was just a reminder. So they were reminded and they were reminded again, but they turned their backs. This is a, a parable that spans the history of God's church from ancient Israel to modern Israel, from the ancient Jews to God's Christian church today. And when the Jews rejected the invitation of God, then he turned around, he rejected them as his special people and now his special people is his church. And God's church is a church made up of all those whom he has called. Notice therefore, as we go on further in this story, that when the people came in and sat down at the wedding, the king came in, verse 11, and he saw there a man who did not have on the wedding garment. Now, so what? Suppose a poor guy didn't have the fancy clothes. Can you blame him? You, you, you sent out an invitation, take them off the streets, tell them to come, right? Not, nothing is, just come, just come, just come. So he came and he sits in at the wedding, perhaps in his blue jeans and sneakers, whatever. But the king gets upset because he doesn't have on the wedding garment. Is that a reasonable piece of upset if you will? 
Yes, it is. Because when the king invites them and say, everybody come, just come, what he did when they came in, he sent them all to the royal wardrobers and equipped each one with appropriate attire. And so everybody could come and sit in in the king's fancy clothes, eat the king's fancy food, enjoy the king's fancy wedding because they were the king's fancy guests. But here was a man who obviously believed that he wasn't like the Kreger Kreger who came in off his cheat. He is a top honoris. He has nice clothes. And thank you, your majesty, but no thank you. I can do without those fancy clothes that you're wearing. I think I look perfectly good as I am. And so when the king said, how come you're not wearing the marriage clothes, the wedding garment, the clothes that I prepared for you? The brother was speechless because he did not really have a good excuse. And so the story goes on to, to tell, as you know, that he was, the king says, throw him into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth and so on and so forth. What is the message in it for us? God is calling all people to him to be a part of his church. And he says we need to come as we are. Now, some of us cannot handle that. First of all, we don't believe we can come as we are. We have to fix up before we come to Jesus. Jesus, you don't know what I have been doing. You don't know who I have been. You don't know how far I've gone. You don't know how low I've sunk. But God is saying today, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter where you're coming from, you can come to me just as you are because there is absolutely nothing you can do to fix yourself up to make you worthy of being where I am putting you. I will do the fixing up for you. Come just as you are. There's also a problem with those of us who have come. Because some of us have come to the Lord and he has fixed us up, washed us up, made us squeaky clean, dressed us up in nice clothes, put us down in his, in, in, in his, 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 in his house and, and he has pointed to us and said, look, look at my children. And we sit there glowing with pride, holy pride. And the holy pride, we hold the pride, the holy pride so long that it deteriorates into unholy pride. So when the next person comes in who has not yet been washed, who has not yet been dressed, who has not yet been fixed up, we look around and think that they don't deserve to be there among all of us nice, squeaky clean people. And so there are persons who come into God's church and they do not feel comfortable because we do not make them feel comfortable. We don't look happy to see them. And when they make their mistakes, we are down on them like a ton of bricks. Not remembering that in God's house is where we get fixed up. And today I say to you, my brothers and sisters, let us allow God to fix us. And let us allow God to help us. To use us to help fix up our brothers and sisters. Amen. In Revelation chapter 19, the theme is picked up again. Out there on the rocky, barren island of Patmos. Symbolic of the harsh and hostile circumstances that the church was experiencing at the time. There was old man John. The old disciple, yes, that's the guy from Peter, James and John's fame. The last surviving disciple of Jesus. This brother was so faithful and preached so well and was so effective in ministry that he became public enemy number one. Tradition says that they, it went as far as they, they, they took him and put him into a pot of boiling oil to see if they could cook the Christianity out of him. And like the proverbial Jack in the box, John in the pot just popped up when they opened that pot again. And so they decided, if you can't kill him, get him out of the way. 
They put him onto a little island where nobody would see him and nobody would hear him. But they didn't know what they were doing. Because out there in the quietness of the barren wilderness island, God gave him the revelation. And what a book. And so, in the 19th chapter of Revelation, we are told that there is an invitation that has been given. And again, the invitation is to wedding. Verse 6, And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and the voice of many waters, and the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah! For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. To her it was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. She must be dressed to meet the bridegroom. And the bridegroom is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus himself carried that theme when he said in that very famous promise, Let not your heart be troubled. Do you believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If you don't have so I would have told you. Here it goes now. I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Let me tell you something about the ancient wedding custom. Mr. Man sees Miss Lady and he thinks that lady is the lady for me. He goes and he speaks to the parents and <laughs> yes, <laughs> don't think they don't have no anymore, eh? but he goes and speaks to the parents and the parent says, well, um, Mr. Man, what you got? Oh, I have this, I have that, I have that, I have that, I have that. Father says, all right. So, of course, he checks with Miss Lady herself. You know, will you marry me? And Miss Lady already here that he has this and that and that. <laughs> no, she probably doesn't love him for who he is. But you know, <laughs> she says, yes, 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 certainly. So he says to her, okay. I'm becoming betrothed, betrothed to you. Who <laughs> said, oh, we're here. I get engaged. <laughs> and I am going to set up our house, our home, our house. I am going away to prepare a place for you. And then I'm going to come again and do what? Receive you unto myself. So that you can let Papa yard. And where I am, there you may be also. And so usually there is, is about a, a, a period of about a year or so for the engagement. So she generally expects, he's gone to fix up house and room and place because you can't take Miss Lady from her daddy and carry her home to mama. Them sort of stuff, I used to go on them days. Eh? <laughs> and so, she would expect him, but the thing is, she would not know exactly when he's coming. He's gone to set up over there, and she and her ladies are over here, and Mama is telling her now all the things that she needs to do, how to cook Mr. Man food, and how to look after the children, and all of those things, because it's one year now of good intensive training. She's over yonder doing one year of intensive fix-up, right? And then, on the wedding day, right? I mean, the wedding period, about the time when she knows it's supposed to happen, she starts to get ready and fix up and all of that. And he is supposed to come now, he and his groomsmen, his brethren and friends, all of them riding along on their, 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 their late model um, donkeys. Uh, I, I, and they would come sweeping down the road, and then people would be watching out, and someone would say, the bridegroom is coming, the bridegroom is coming, and then she would do all those final fix up and fix up and fix up and rapid things. They would get all kind of excited, and then they would have the marriage, and they would have like a week and two weeks sometimes of celebration afterwards and hey weddings were big things in those days and everybody was there no don't, don't feel it you don't invite any guests those days. Every, everybody coming in you better have plenty of food and all that kind of business. nice things nice times nice times no no jesus used that symbolism 
for the fact that he's coming back for his church, he has gone to prepare. But there's another dimension of it that I want you to notice. And this is the, 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 the third dimension. If you turn your Bibles to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5, and young ladies, they use this one against so you all the way. Eh? Ephesians chapter 5. But don't make them use it again so because it not against anybody. Ephesians 5, the verse 21 onward says what? Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, right? I, I'm, I'm just saying this, this is not the verse I'm using, but I just want to give you, you, you ladies something to put in your pocket, right? Uh, you, you want it? Yes, yes. Here's something to put in your pocket. Verse 22 says, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands. Anytime them start use that one on you, tell them to rewind to verse 21. What does it say? All right, all right. I, 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 I don't hear any amen from the, from the brothers except one or two, but, but you know, it's a, it's a mutual submission, isn't it? Yes, yes, it's a two-way street, the submission business. But of course, it goes on in verse 23. Don't forget verse 23, it says that the husband is the head of the wife. That is also Bible. Amen, amen. Even as Christ is head of the church, right? So therefore, we go on to verse 25, which is really where we're heading. Amen. Husbands, love your wives. And this is not a family life sermon, so let me resist the temptation to digress a little bit. But let me yield to the temptation and digress a little bit. Because... <laughs> There are too many husbands these days who don't seem to remember that this text is in the Bible. They remember the submission part, but they remember the love your wife part. Eh? And many of our sisters are being abused and, and used and refused. And, 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 and it's high time that our brothers stand up to their responsibility and realize that the, the epitome of manliness is godliness because man was made in the image of God. And God is gentle and kind and loving. And so, if a man wants to be a real man, he has to be kind and gentle and loving to his wife. Yeah. Good. Now let's get on to this right here. <laughs> Husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish and that is it for the stakes because what i'm saying now is that while she is waiting for her husband <coughs> she spends time fixing up cleaning up nicing up, preparing because the, the son of the king, the son of God must have a wife that is holy without spot or blemish or any such thing. Who is the church anyway? We are the church. And if the church is to be holy, it means that we must be holy. And so in 1 Peter 1 verse 16, we are told, Be ye holy. That's what God said. Be ye holy. Why? For I am holy. In other words, if you belong to me, then you are holy. Set aside. Sanctified. Wedding day is on the way. Is the bride of Christ ready? That is the question. The bride of Christ will not be ready until you and I are ready. Because God's church, which is us, is his bride. May I therefore recommend a couple of things that we need to take note of before I take my seat. The bride, in order to be ready, must develop a Christ-like character. We must be like Christ. That's why we are called Christians. We are followers of Christ. And the qualities of God must be valued and cultivated among us. 
So let me talk a little bit. Finish preaching. We need to get rid of materialism from among us. There are too many of us who are existing now with our minds fixed on what we can get and what we can have. And when we get something, we want another one, a bigger one, a prettier one, a better one, a newer one, a later model, a more sophisticated one, a better one than what that one has. And when you look among the people of God, we seem to be reaching out for things and things and more things. Now we need to balance things, you know, because it's a pendulum. We can't swing it too much far this way or too far that way. And there are some people of God now who don't have any ambition. Who just seem to believe that, oh, Jesus soon come and need to get anything or do anything or... But I'm saying, even as we seize every opportunity that God has given us to ride upon the high places of the earth, we need to recognize that our eyes must not be fixed on the things of this earth, but fixed on the things above. We as Christians need to set our priorities straight. Too many Christian people are selling out their eternal heritage for a mess of pottage. Because we want a particular job, a particular kind of career, we forget our Christian principles. Let me talk practical to you now. Because right at, at, within our institutions of learning, we have so many of our young Seventh-day Adventist Christians who in order to ensure that they can make certain grades, do not remember that Friday night is Sabbath. Amen. And we spend God's holy time studying our academics. And doing our exams, not remembering that we must put God first. Are we or are we not the bride of Christ? And then we go out to look jobs, and again comes the compromises. And then those who don't get jobs, who go to further compromises in order to live. Live. My brothers and sisters, we need to set aside materialism. And even within the churches, materialism taking over so many to many other churches. I love a beautiful church. I believe in all my heart that when fixing up something for God, it must look good, eh? Yeah, man. Nice, nice, nice. But let me tell you something. The church can be so important that it takes precedence over the people who are in the church. And there are too many churches that cannot find the money to help sponsor their young people to camp because they have a building program going on. There are too many churches that cannot give their young people a chance to do something in church because they have to preserve the respectability. It's only the elders can do this and the elders can do that. We must realize that Jesus did not die for steel and stones. He died for flesh and bones. I move on. The church needs to be less compromising. Every little thing with us, all right? Anything goes. And these days, all kind of things creeping into church. No, I don't believe in preaching on certain things like our clothes and all them kind of something there. But I have to say that Bridget we're taking this thing too far now. Yeah. Some Christians don't look like Christians at all when they put themselves together. Hey! Let's face it. There's no text in the Bible that says thou shalt not wear this and thou shalt not wear that. So, I mean, come on. But listen, as Jamaicans, we have certain standards and principles, certain things that we expect of Christians, certain things that we expect of the world. Young lady walking down the street. Christian young lady, you know, going down the road, nicely posted up, going to work and all that kind of thing. They can drive jokes for the corner. So the sister in a pass by. See? Yo! 
死のピラマインいやおやなよしいやおやなやまなかわりよ She turns around, she strikes a pose, she says, I am not your kind. Ooh, ooh, no, that's supposed to lick dread and burn him where he is. <laughs> no, sir. You're under your dread. Dread, stand up the right of the crease and ready for that. Stroke it into the covers and say, If you're not my kind, peck down the side. <laughs> Got it? Got it? Got it? Some of us are sailing along the ocean. HMS belong to God. And the flag that is flying up here says, HMS belong to Satan. Don't confuse people. Don't leave them to have to guess. I'm not saying you must walk out there with all the dresses down here so and all the trousers up here so and all that kind of business. But I am saying that people must look and don't have to question that you are decent somebody because you are a child of God. Stop compromising man. Then the church needs to love the word. I had a friend one time who um, got a boyfriend, you know. Well, we were in school to, 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 together, and this guy used to like her from school days, and he kept on fooling on, fooling on. But she was a bubbly, bubbly, bouncy kind of person, and he was very, very quiet and all of that. And, you know, she couldn't, she, she, just, she, just, she couldn't envision herself. So, but this guy was persistent. And so we left school and he went overseas and she was still here, but he kept up the phone calls and he kept up the cards and he kept up this and that, you know. And I noticed, one day she come to me and she said, I, I, I don't know, I call his name, I'm going to call him what, Martin, let me call him Martin. He said, she said Mikey, M Martin, Martin, keep on calling me, calling me, calling me, calling me. I, I, I don't know what to do. I said, hmm. I remember that time when you didn't know what to do. So something or something. Yeah. And she kept on. And I remember one day when she had her birthday and Martin, they're all the way in the States and all of a sudden, turn up big bucket of flowers and all them kind of something. Make arrangements from over yonder and tend to her over here. And I'm kind of thinking, no, Martin, can Martin know how to play the game? Right? And I noticed the goodbye because she was saying, Do you know, the other day I was talking to Martin and so on so on. Martin. No, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> After all, it was Martin, 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 Martin. One day I got tired, I said, listen man, I'm sick and tired of you, but it's Martin, 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 all over. I don't want to hear one Martin one more time. I shook him and go, I went to Martin. <laughs> to you and something else some of us, some of us we don't even like to talk about God and God writes us love letters and every day there are love letters love letters for us and we, we, we read them no sir we talk to that no God come 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 Sabbath all the love letters from the week we paddle and we read them one day yes yes and we don't talk to God no God I truly know what did you say that charge and they say or maybe, um, you know, God, we can only get through these calls after 11 in the night and have to sleep earlier than that. But we need to own our God. Yeah. Talk about Him, right? Good. Two more things. Number one, excellence. Excellence. What do we give to God? I am sick and tired of going into churches and see all kind of DVD foolishness going on in the name of God. Yes. You go to some churches and you can tell exactly, you know, somebody comes up. Good morning, Sabbath school. You look so nice down there. You look like a garden full of flowers. If you could come up here and see yourself down there, you would, huh? And you know that, 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 that,
said the 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 uh, the, the, the special. I was here with the special. Was, I was hoping I could get into trouble now. But uh, music plays a very important. You know, we we we. There's no imagination. There's no creativity. There's no sophistication. There's no smoothness. There's no excellence. We don't put ourselves into planning that something good. We're going to preach a sermon and we just grow some money for something. You know, or we find one that we had done some time ago and take them out. Cross it off and come give it to the saints, right? We don't even have the decency to microwave it first. I, 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 I mean, you are here. You are the new intelligentsia of the church. You are the guys who are being educated. Get out there and change this mess. Make a difference. God has invested in your intellectual development. Go out there and apply it to his work. And let the church rise. And let, 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 us, let us see that, that, that God has put something into us. But are we giving him our best? Is the church becoming ready? Finally, there is... many people to holy holy you know oh, oh. wife said to husband sweetheart walk you know we used to go for moonlight walk she used to send letters come to me there's even flowers we used to say how much you love me you know how long you're until we say you love me and we said well baby we're not telling that to be married but it changed my mind we're not telling you again <laughs> can't work so. God tells us. He says, Behold, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee unto me. He says, Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor height, nor that things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate you from my love. He says, I so love the world that, that, that you in the world that I gave the very, very best I have. I mean, all day long, you know, splitting out the love lyrics. Just, just, just lyrics, just lyrics, just lyrics all day long. And if you think the lyrics is enough, every single day he sends food, every single day he sends clothing and shelter and friendship and opportunities. He is so considerate and kind every day. He is lavishing his love upon us. And we're not getting excited about them kind of. No wonder so you smile and turn up on your doorstep and start, start try romance you and you're so cool. <laughs> Because every day God trying the same thing and you're they're, they're not even all of what God is doing, you don't have any time for him much less. We need to get some passion into the business. Eh? We need to learn to express this love. And one of the best ways to express love for God is to express love for his children. I am sick and tired of the coldness of our churches. And Christians are not, 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 not loving anymore. Let me tell you, let me tell, let me tell you an example. Somebody come on and say. Lord, my dear, you know, hear what happened to so and so. <laughs> yeah. He said, no, Bob. You know? No, you, you, you know, I read it, flap it back till I say, pop story, you know. But at least, you know, can we, how we think about each other? Why do we so easily believe the evil of each other? It has to do with the kind of love we have for one another. If you are here and there's nobody in your life that you are prepared to swear from, I'm sorry for you. There must be somebody who you trust enough to say, I do not believe that such a person will do such a thing. Unless you know that nobody can trust you on anything. Because there are people of integrity still in the world. And even those who make mistakes, right? It's not because their hearts are bad sometimes, but all of us are fighting against principalities, against powers, against the rulers and darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. And we need to begin to defend one another and protect one another and be friendly to each other and kind to one another and pray for one another. One of the, the things I have against my Adventist church sister, and you know, <laughs> I mean, I'm driving on the road on a Sabbath morning. 
I miss one of the church sister. Obviously, I did this church sister because apart from the fact that she looked like she dressed for church, she have water lip. <laughs> and you know the part when you see it, right? Right. And I am prepared to pick up said sister who is standing by the roadside waiting for a ride. But as I'm coming down and she looks like she see the car and looking her direction, she goes. You know, we get to the point where we can't even be, we can't even meet one another's eyes anymore. We can't smile with somebody. We can't say hello, right? Too many people believe that you know, if we tell him morning, he might rape me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it seems that way to me. Yeah, come on. Man. Let me tell you what's happened with a, with a, 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 a good friend of mine, right? A very sophisticated. Lady, she holds a particular job. But those of you who know me and know she says my friend, when we know she, but if I say what kind of job she holds, I won't say. I won't say. But she, she, she holds a pretty good job. Um, she drives a decent car, dressed nicely, and she, she knows how to put her little self She knows how to put herself together. When she put herself together, ooh la la. <laughs> Anyhow, she's walking down the street. And uh, the Lord has put her together, packaged her properly. Yes. yes. So she is well packaged here, so and there, so and also around here, so. <laughs> she is walking down the street. And as she's mincing it down the street in her high heels and looking, and passing her head to the floor and going to a Rastaman Jukalaka, I said, Rastaman. <laughs> and said, La data, you look good wrong about that. You must say I take foul pill. <laughs> no. How would you respond to that? Absolutely affronted. I what kind of little hey, you, you know, you're not going to say that to him in you know, out loud <clears throat> because he's still going to be mincing down the road and totally ignoring him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is what she did. I'm a rate this big time. Our oh, girl stop. She strike a pose. We don't know how to strike them kind of pose, but she strike a pose. And she flash her head. And she look around and she flash ready her sweetest smile. And she said, No dread. I'm not taking a foul pill. All of this about God give me. <laughs> Pass her head the other way and went mincing down the street again. Rastaman and the corner laugh, and all them bridging them laugh. He's happy, she's happy, nobody not her. Does that go? Yeah. Why is it that we can't just be nice to people? Yes. The Bible says, yes, I hear the music, which means I'm telling that it's time to finish. All right. The Bible says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have love one for another. It is not the keeping of the Ten Commandments. It is not perfect Sabbath observance. It is not being able to stand up and shout to everybody, I'm a virgin! No. The evidence, the evidence, the evidence that we are disciples of God and the bride of Christ is that we have love one for another. So now, before I sit down, turn to somebody nearby and see if you can begin to build up the love business. Wedding day is on the way. We are the bride of Christ. Let's take some time out from all the other things we have been doing and focus on becoming who we ought to be so that when Christ comes, he will find his church perfect, spotless.
spotless, without blemish. And the greatest evidence of that is the love we show to him and the love we show to each other. May God bless you. And when the wedding day comes, may you be a beautiful bride. Amen. This is wonderful, a wonderful message. I have nothing to say, but to God be the glory, great things you have done. At this time, we're going to sing. We're going to sing, What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms, which is number 469. Please stand.
Or is it somebody like that? Not yet a Christian and you want special prayer because you want to be able to make that commitment to the Lord soon and very soon. Or is there somebody who has made the commitment already but you have been compromising. You have forgotten that we need to be prepared that God is coming for his bride and if the, the, if the bride is to be ready, I must be ready. You know what I mean? You've been making compromises. You have not been serving God as you should. And today you want to say, Pastor, pray for me. Because I need to strengthen. And I, I, I need to do better. Don't just raise your hand where you are. God bless you. Finally, just before we pray, is there somebody who has a burden on your heart? And you really, really want to lay it down at Jesus' feet today? And you want to just come closer and we can pray together? A special burden. There's a need to fully, fully surrender to Christ. So, to, to focus on the important things. You think God is calling you for something more than you have been doing. And today you want to make that commitment. Since that song is being played, we'll sing a verse of it while you're coming. of this moment we stand in your presence aware that we are under the eyes of God aware Lord that you have paid the price you have made every provision that you are eager to come back so that you can put an end to this sin problem you see those who are suffering from AIDS and cancer those who are starving to death, little children born with deformities, people who are the victims of accidents and disease. You see the hatred piling up in the hearts of men and the brutality of mankind to his brother. You see, Lord, the perversion and the immorality that is rampant in the world today. And you need to put an end to all of this. <clears throat> But we know that you have been tarrying because the bride is not ready. Oh dear God, 
Even today we pray that you'll draw near to us and by the power of your Holy Spirit, show us ourselves. What we are and what we ought to be. And today as we come before you in penitence, seeking your forgiveness for having failed you so badly, we ask that you will forgive us. You have promised that if we confess, you are faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You have promised, Lord, that you'll cast our sins into the deepest part of the sea and remember them no more. You have promised that you are willing to take up your residence inside of us and help us to live victorious lives. You have said that if we are in Christ, we'll be new creatures. And we claim that newness today, asking that you'll give each of us a new start and empower us to live for Jesus where we are, realizing that this life is destined for destruction. But today, we can hold on to something that lasts forever. Thank you for the love you have expressed to us. Teach us, Father, how to love. Tune our hearts to the wavelength of love. And we may know how to relate to you and how to relate to each other. May our churches become warm and loving and supportive and full of the Spirit. May we sing with sincerity and pray from our hearts. May we learn again how to laugh and how to cry in the presence of God. May this church be truly the representative of God on earth, the bride preparing for the bridegroom. Bless our leaders, pastors, elders, youth leaders, and those who set the tone within our churches. Teach us to be men and women of Christian integrity. We pray for our youth and our children that you walk beside them and guide them through the twisting, turning ways of this perverted world. And Father, help us that on that day when wedding day arrives, and you burst the clouds of glory, when 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands of angels place those silver trumpets to their lips and peal after peal of the sound of the trumpets echo and, and re-echo through this earth. When the earth is lighted up with your glory and all the universe rejoices for the wedding day of the Lamb has come, may we be there spotless and without blemish in the presence of our God. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Dismiss us, Lord, with blessings we pray.